Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Vipur, and we are back with the next session on uh, on eGov Digit Partners Training, wherein we have been, uh, you know, talking about uh, the digit implementation overviews about uh, implementation and deployment. Uh, this is the uh, you know last session of the day where we would be covering the online business plan approval module. So far, we have uh, so far we have done uh, you know two product demos uh, in the first half of the day. Uh, we started yesterday with overview governance, uh, architecture, microservices, and uh, and uh, DevOps for uh, Digit. Uh, today we covered in the morning uh, the mgram seva module and property text module uh, this uh, uh, in this session we will talk about the online business plan approval systems uh, ag uh, again a reminder of uh, uh, your uh, engagement on the uh, chat and q a uh, for the respective purposes you can interact with your fellow participants in chat box or you or uh, uh, or put up your questions for the speakers and trainers in Q&A box, and we will keep, or we will try to address as many as possible in the given time frame. Uh, at the end of the session, there will be a feedback form uh, where your screen will be redirected to a feedback form. That's where you can, uh, you know, give your feedback, which will help us in the future. Uh, with that, I'd, let me start off uh, with Shankar, uh, Shankar and Pradeep. Uh, are here for this session. I'll stop sharing my screen and hand it over to uh, both of them to take this session forward. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vibo. Hi, everyone. Um, let me present my screen. Okay. We'll have a quick overview about the product first. Then we'll get into the product demo. Okay. Um, so uh, online building permission system uh, is application developed by Digit. And uh, we have two major parts in this. One is an EDCR scrutiny, development control rules scrutiny online. And the other part is the online building permission application form where a user can submit the application form along with the diagram and then so that application processing can be done in the urban local body or the DTCP department. Uh, so the features what we have is that first is the registration. Registration is basically for a business user, uh, maybe an architect or a town planner who is a private party, but want to do a business in the city saying that on behalf of the citizen, they can draw the diagrams of the building permits and then submit it to the admin local body or the uh, town and country planning department. Uh, so that there's a registration process by involving certain, uh, the architect needs to submit few uh, documents or license uh, that they have. And with that, some registration nominal fee so that they can get registered uh, themselves as a registered architect into the system. Post architect, the user can uh, do the online EDCR scrutiny system. And uh, post that there is an application processing where uh, form submission is the first step. Then uh, employees can do a document scrutiny uh, in the system. Uh, they can also enter the field inspection report. Also, the no objection certificate, which are needed for the particular diagram. And finally, it goes for an uh, online fee payment by the calculation rule engine that, that runs on the back end based on the different parameters that are extracted from the diagram. And post that there is an approval cycle where a final officer approves the entire application and then there is a permit order that is issued to the citizen. And right now we have two services. One is uh, online building permission. Other one is an occupancy certificate uh, application uh, in the online building permission system. <clears throat> this is an uh, uh, overview. And uh, yeah. So this is the process for the online EDCR scrutiny of an application where uh, a registered architect can log into the system. He or she can upload the diagram. Uh, the system will validate the uploaded diagram into the system will extract the values from the uploaded diagrams, make them as mathematical values, 
this mathematical values will be validated against the bylaws that are already configured in the system and then output will be thrown. An output can be either approved or rejected. If it is approved, it is entitled that this diagram can be used for building permit application crossing. If it is rejected, the output will, will, will show you what all the places the diagram is rejected. It will say your front setback should be like less than 1.2 meters. It is more than 1.2 meters. That's the reason it is fair. It will throw in validation report so that it becomes easier for the architect to correct the diagram then and there and then submit it. The unique feature of this EDCR validation is that it, it happens on a real time. Uh, once you show, show the demo, you will understand what real time means. And post that after a success, you can create a building permit application online. Uh, Vipur, I would request you to uh, uh, get the first poll question now. Vipur, you are on mute. Sorry, yes, I'm launching this uh, <clears throat> poll. So everybody has about, let's say, 30 seconds. It's a single question. Uh, you can respond so that we know. <clears throat> And at the end of 30 seconds or so, we will launch the result. All right, so I'm sharing the result here. Uh, Shankar, hope you see that. Uh, we've got about 31 responses out of 57 attendees. Uh, you're on mute if you're speaking. Sorry, I can see you. Yeah, thank you for your response. Um, uh, we can see most of uh, the uh, attendees doesn't have an online EDCS scrutiny. Okay, let's jump into the demo of online EDCS scrutiny. Okay. Yeah. If you had attended the earlier product demo, this is the landing page of a citizen screen where there are different services for the citizen, uh, starting from complaints, property taxes, trade licenses, events, documents, etc. And they're one of the services for building plan approval system. Uh, in that, we have two segregations. One is an uh, uh, login for an architect who is already registered as a stakeholder into the system, as I told you earlier. Other link is for the citizen uh, who, is, who is actually constructing the building. So now I'm logging in as an architect to do the EDCR building scrutiny. I'm logging in with a mobile number of an architect who is already registered into the system. Okay, uh, there is some I'm logging in. I'm selecting the city in which I'm going to construct the building. Building plan approval, registered architect login. Mobile number OTP based login uh, is present in digit. So now uh, you can see uh, there is an EDCS scrutiny. There is a building plan approval card. In the EDCS scrutiny card, you can see plan scrutiny for new construction, occupancy certificate plan scrutiny for new construction. As uh, there are two services in the EDCS scrutiny itself. Now our objective is that a citizen is going to construct a building and the citizen is asking the architect to draw a diagram on behalf of the citizen and the architect has drawn the diagram. Now the architect contains the diagram in the .dxf format. AutoCAD open source extension format is called .dxf format. So that diagram is drawn and then saved in .dxf format. That diagram will be uploaded in this link so that there is an auto scrutiny that is happening. Uh, so this is a single floor residential building, a simple residential building which we have uh, drawn uh, in the .dxf format and I'm going to upload this diagram into the system and, and throw an output. So now when you click on that, selecting the city, see Shankar is the actual applicant who is constructing the building. I'm selecting the file in the .dxf format. 
and submit again. The moment I click on submit, what happens is system extract the values from the diagram. It validates with that of the bylaws and then you will throw an output. Okay. So now this is the time taken for the entire scrutiny process. It hardly took like around 10 to 15 seconds. Now I'm downloading the scrutiny report. It says new building plan it is here accepted successfully. That means that this diagram is drawn properly with the layer and coloring standards prescribed by digit stand prescribed by digit, and um, and it is complying to the bylaws that is defined for city A. That's the reason it is accepted. Now when I download the scrutiny report, the report will have cl clean and clear details of the entire bylaws that got approved. As you've seen, I entered the applicant name and the city. Rest all information is extracted from the diagram itself. There is no manual entry here. Uh, only Shankar is entered in the uh, user interface. For example, plot number, kata number, what is the plot area, what are all the declarations given in the diagram, and what is the total build up area, floor area, carpet area, how many blocks are there, block wise summaries. And if you take a look at it, for example, FAR, FAR, bylaw number is clearly given by law number 38 says that your FAR should be less than or equal to 1.2 uh, and the provided value is 0.31. That is the reason it is accepted. Suppose if it is more than this prescribed value, it would have said rejected. So now what the architect has to do, he or she has to go back, only uh, correct the far part of the diagram and then again re-upload this uh, entire thing. So, so what happens is this iterative time taken uh, in the manual process is totally, totally, totally removed now. So this is a very real time process. In 10 to 15 seconds, you get a scrutiny output. Whereas in a manual system, it is not like that. That's the advantage of it. And so whatever bylaws you have configured, all the bylaws will be validated. It is not subjective to person to system validates all the bylaws, whatever you have prescribed in the packet. So that this is an evidence saying that, okay, I validated everything. That is the reason I'm accepting or rejecting. So now we have an EDCI scrutiny number as well as uh, a report. Now the next process is building plan, applying for a building permit application. Um, so this is the uh, entire process flow for a building permit application. Since, since the process flow is huge, I cannot maximize the zoom. This is a maximum zoom that is available. Uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, so an architect or a citizen can submit the application. Post submission, it goes for a document scrutiny. Along with the application, you will see, I will be uploading a few documents that are required for this application. Those documents will be scrutinized. And uh, so after document scrutiny, it goes for a town planning overseer for a field inspection where uh, the inspector goes to the field and then validates whether the information given in the diagram is, is same as uh, that is given on the ground. And post field inspection, it goes to the no uh, to for receiving uh, no objection from different department if it is needed based on the construction of the building. Uh, and post that, it goes to superintendent and executive engineer for further approval. Uh, so now what we'll do is uh, we'll move on to the application processing side. Um, either I can directly uh, click on apply for a building permit from here, or I can note down this DCS scrutiny number and then create the building permit application later whenever I'm free as an architect. So both are possible in the system. So now I'm directly trying to click on apply for a building permit. So the moment I click on build, building plan permit, it tells me it would take 15 minutes to complete this process. Also, it tells me what are all the documents that are needed for uh, submitting this application upfront so that the, the user is well aware that uh, um, these are all the uh, documents that are needed. He or she can keep it uh, handy or keep it ready before creating the application itself. So that's the reason this is the first screen. And uh, so when I click on next, it goes to uh, a place where it clearly tells you how many steps are there. It, it says there is a scrutiny detail step, there is an owner and documentation step, there is a MOC detail step, there is a summary step. And this is the EDGS scrutiny number. The major point that need, needs to be noticed is that whatever information that is populated from the diagram cannot be modified in the screen. Um, so, so um, uh, you you may you may have a doubt whether the user can edit this information. No, over and above whatever is presented from the system from the diagram, only those information can be entered by the user. Rest all information pop which are populated from the diagram cannot be modified in the screen. Okay, um, so it contains the DCI number what we created now. It contains the basic details. And when I click on next, it goes to the next step where it is asking for land registration detail and holding number. So because this information is not provided in the diagram, I'm saying just uh, test for the purpose of demo. 
And uh, this information is populated from the uh, scrutiny uh, plan. It contains what was the plan that was uploaded by the architect. If I click on this, this diagram gets downloaded. As well as it improve, it, it contains the scrutiny report PDF output as well. And uh, it gives details about proposed building abstract, sub occupancies, and the floor level details. So when I go to the next step, next is it asks the location detail of the uh, building, where, where I'm planning to construct the building. Either I can use the GIS map to select the location on the map, or I can enter the pin code city and lo locality info. Um, I'm selecting the map. So it is populating the pin code city and mohalla information from the uh, map itself. Um, street level detail is not present. That's the reason street is empty. If you want to manually enter the street name, you can enter the street name. If I want to enter the landmark, I can enter the landmark. Um, So then it goes to the owner details, whether this property uh, is constructed by a single owner or multiple owner. If it is a single owner, I need to enter the owner details. Uh, here, since Digit is a platform, he, he or she can be a citizen who has already availed some service in the Digit platform. For example, they have raised a complaint or they already have a property where they are paying property taxes. In system would have already had their mobile number in place uh, in, the, in the database. Uh, so if I use that mobile number and click on search, it will prefetch the information that is already present in the database. Suppose if the citizen is not even present in the digital platform, if I enter the mobile number name and gender, it will create a profile for the citizen online. So I'm using an existing profile, which is mine. And proceeding. Now it goes to the owner and document info. Um, so, for the sake of the demo, I'm just uh, uploading some random file. And these attachment are multiple. You can add multiple attachments to it. It's not only one attachment that is needed. I'm attaching only the mandatory uh, documents that are needed for submitting the application. Okay, so now at this moment, you can see there is an info on the bottom of the page. It says application number got generated. After the owner info is added, there is an application number got generated. At this juncture, you can close a window. Is there a, is there a, if there is a possibility, there is an internet outage or you have some other work, you can close a window. What will happen is this application and reference will come in the my applications of the citizen info that is entered in the previous screen. So the citizen can log into the system as well as the architect can log into the system. He or she can uh, modify that information post uh, or complete the application process. Uh, here, citizen doesn't have a role to complete the application process. Uh, architect has a role to complete the application process. Now I'm continuing with this uh, application flow. Uh, application number is 1216. Uh, so now you can see, uh, based on the information that is entered in the diagram, system has identified that there are two NOCs that are needed. One is fire NOC, other one is airport NOC. And uh, one application is getting poked into three different applications here. In the previous screen, we saw an application number 1216 got generated for the urban local body or the town and country planning department. Here, 2374, 2373, two different applications got created for fire and ocean airport. Citizen needs to just uh, create one application on behalf of architect so that it gets forked into three different applications. In in, in few cases, we have seen that um, 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 a well-versed architect, he or she knows what are all the NOCs that are needed. Up friend, they come with an NOC during the application process itself. If, if that is the case, the architect can upload the fire NOC if it is already present. If it is not present, they can simply submit the application by clicking on next. So here is a summary page. In the summary page, the applicant can uh, check the details of the application. And then uh, if there is any mistakes or correction that needs to be done, they can very well correct it. Also, it contains a total amount for the application process. So now the process is, since the architect is creating the application on behalf of the citizen, it is mandate in the workflow process uh, for the citizen to approve this application. A citizen has to validate the application and then check the correctness of it. So now I'm sending this application to the citizen. So now, I'm going back home, I'm logging out. 
from the architect profile. I am logging in as Shankar. Shankar would have uh, got a mobile SMS saying that uh, the architect is all, has created an application and then you have to log in and approve it. There is a mobile interface for this mobile application. And now I am logging in as in, uh, I am logging out from architect and logging, uh, logging in as Shankar to approve this application so that it can be processed. I'm logging in as citizen. So application number 1216. It says citizen approval is pending and necessarily it is uh, stand uh, level agreement is 60. Service level agreement is 60, 60 days. That is defined for this particular service. As a citizen, I can see what all the information entered by the architect. I can see the diagram, I can see the output, I can see the documents attached by the architect. Then I can say, okay, uh, everything is in order, you can proceed. Or I can say some action needs to be taken and then you have to correct these many uh, details in the application process. Both, both are possible. For the sake of the demo, I am I'm proceeding with the approve uh, cycle now. Also, I can provide my comments in the application. So as a citizen, I, I given a consent to the architect to uh, submit the application to the department. Now I am logging in as an architect to submit this application to the department. Logging in as an architect. Okay. Um, so now OBPS inbox, OBPS is online building permission system inbox. Um, okay, application number is 001216. It says permit application and stakeholder submission is pending. So as an architect, I need to submit this application. I'm opening the application as an architect. So I am submitting. Also, you can see the comments entered by the citizen. Please submit the application. Also, there is a feature to call the uh, applicant. Uh, if it is in a mobile interface, if you click on this icon, it will open the phone app and then uh, uh, make a call to the concerned person. I'm submitting this application. After submit, it will redirect the user to the payment page. I can simply close this window and then ask the citizen to make a payment from his online portal. Or as an architect, I can make the payment on behalf of the citizen. For the sake of the demo, I'm just paying uh, on behalf of the citizen. Okay, we need to enter the card details. Okay. Now. Okay, so this is the low risk application. Uh, the risk is defined based on the height of the building. Uh, if it is height, height is below certain meters, you can define that as a low risk application. In one of our clients, uh, for the low risk application, the protocol is they can issue the permit order right away on submit of the application. Later, they will validate the application and then provide a, uh, if there is a, any deviation, they will penalize the applicant. So that's how it is configured. That's the reason you can see a permit order that got generated here. Um, so this is in configuration actually, workflow configuration with depending on height. If you don't want that for your particular client, you can very well change the config. You can see there is a plan permission number that got generated. With this as a reference, the citizen is very well entitled to do, start the construction at the, work, at the, at the site. And uh, so now after this, uh, the application is submitted. Now we need to log into the employee side and then do the application processing. Okay. If there are any doubts or clarification I can take or else I can go with the flow. Um, uh, 
So there, there are a few questions on the drawing part actually, like how layer names we did all this is for us. You want to you want to take the Pradeep? You can answer now. Or you already answered okay. it? Yeah, I, I replied actually. Okay. Uh, Vipur, can you give the second poll? We'll take a few seconds. Sure, I'm launching the second poll. Again, we'll give about 30 seconds for participants to respond. Okay, then I'm stopping and sharing the result of the poll. Hope you can see that. Yeah, yeah. Results are more or less same as first. Same as the earlier question. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, team. Um, so I'll proceed with the application processing now. I am now I'm logging in as an employee from the urban local body or the town planning department. Um, since it is an employee, I'm moving on to the desktop view. I'm logging in with a username and password for an employee. Okay, so this is the view for an uh, dashboard view for an uh, employee where it contains module or product wise inboxes. Uh, we are worried about online building permission system where it contains 40, 41 inbox items. And uh, so this is sorted based on the latest created date on top. Um, so it contains one to one checks the application what we created now, and you can do filters based on application number, mobile number. Also, you can have a search application here. We have a lot of filters on web panel. Uh, based on selection of filter, you'll have uh, a lot of uh, other filters that is getting enabled. It's an it's a feature for the for ease ease of access to the employee and. Uh, now, as an employee, I can view the information provided uh, by the architect. Uh, the employee can see the information. The employee can see the document that are uploaded. In case, if the employee feels that some of the document that are provided are not correct or complete, he or she can very well ask for more documents. Uh, that is also, uh, or they can call and validate uh, whether they're there. Uh, the document, what they are seeing is right or wrong. Also, they can send it back to the citizen asking for more information or they can forward to the next level officer for field inspection or they can revoke the permit order. This revocation is, uh, as I told you, uh, in, in, since it is a low risk application, the permit order got generated at the very first step. Uh, so suppose there is a major blunder that or issue that an employee has seen in the application process. He or she can revocate the permit order in the very first step itself. That's a revocate. Uh, uh, and there is a PDF revocation that got generated. So now I am forwarding this application to the next level of it now. Okay, so now the application is sent to the field inspector. Now I'm logging out from an uh, document verifier and logging in as a field inspector to do the uh, field inspection process. Uh, same, we have an uh, inbox, and uh, inbox. I am seeing that. Uh, Okay, there is an assign to me and assign to all uh, tabs. 
uh, assign to me basically gives me the list of work items which is which i need to take action on assign to all is, is basically a list of items there can be a uh, four field inspectors in an office assign to all will give give access to uh, view wherever the role is field inspection assign to me will will give the list of items which is very particular to say vibor whatever action vibor needs to take on it will come to vibor's inputs so now i am opening the 1216 application i need to enter the field inspection report um, so there is an inspection date and time i can enter the date and time and there is a checklist since this field inspector is a, a person who goes to the site uh, we made it as a mobile uh, easy screen for uh, for the for the user where we have a set of checklist questions they need to answer this question in a yes or no format uh, so so it is easy for them to operate on the mobile and this is a configurable ch checklist depending from state to state and city to city uh, so we can ask few questions and then the user can simply say yes or no also we are allowing the user to uh, attach photograph of the site uh, in the field inspection uh, if it is added in the mobile interface it will open a camera and then you can take a photograph right now i am using a desktop to upload the file You can add uh, multiple field inspection report here. Suppose today I go for field inspection and I did something I was not satisfied. Tomorrow I, I want to do one more field inspection. That is also possible in the system. Assume it goes to the next level officer and an officer is not convinced on certain photographs or something. If he or she is directing the field inspector to go for one more field inspection, then this comes in handy to have a multiple field inspection report feature. And restore information is populated from the application. And now the user can forward it to the next level officer or send back to the citizen for more info or revocate the permit based on the findings from the field inspection. Okay. So now uh, during the application process, we saw that something called no objection certificate uh, application got generated. Um, so the process is um, either they can API to API integration with the no objection certificate department, where if it talks to uh, uh, the department and then you get a response out of it. Suppose if there is no API integration possible and there is no system in the third party no objection certificate department, Digit provides an interface for the third party department to log into the system and process the application. In this case, what will happen is the fire and department user can log into the system and then access the uh, application for fire NOC no objection certificate. And then manually he or she can process this application in their department. Once the process is completed, then we can come back to this no, object no objection form and then uh, update the status whether approved or rejected with a proper approval or rejection letter. So that's what we are going to see now. I'm logging in as a fire NOC user. Who is not part of urban local body or town planning, country planning department, but to it from a different department. So they can have an access in digit system to access the fire NOC applications. You can see there are 68 applications. This 2374 is the one which we created now. It's a source module is OBPS. Uh, so it has a source module because this fire NOC no object certificate can also come from trade licenses also in some cases. So that's the reason we have a source module so that the user can identify which module has requested for this no-object certificate. When he or she opens the application, there is a reference to the building permit application here. You can see PGBP. 1216 is the BP application which we created now. The fire energy user will have access to the application so that they can see, okay, this is the new construction and this is the DXF file, this is the output. These are all the uh, information added in the plan. Uh, and then they can see the application form. So now, based on this information, they can process the no objection certificate application in their department offline because they don't have an online system. Once the process ends there, either they can approve or reject. In that case, he or she can come here. They can approve, enter, uh, upload a, either an approval letter or a rejection letter. 
and then update the action of the resident. So once you approve this, the department official in the urban local body or town and country planning will know that this has been approved by the fire and user in the application form. Application status would have been approved in the application form. We'll see that now. So that the ULB department officer can, can sure shot sure know that the NOC department has given NOC so that I can approve the uh, building permit application if everything is in order. Now I'm logging in as an um, officer who is responsible for NOC verification. So now the officer is opening the application. Now, if you scroll down and see the, the card where the fire owner's detail was given, the status would have been changed to approve and there would be an approval letter. Inspection report, document detail, see. Fire NOC, we can see status is approved in green. And there is an yes. approval number plus the upload, up, uh, approval report that is uploaded by the fire NOC user. With this as a friend, the NOC officer responsible for no certificate can approve the up, uh, application on his behalf from the system. So this is this is a provision for the NOC officer to upload a no certificate offline. Assume that uh, the no certificate department is not even willing to log into the system and approve. This officer can upload a hard copy uh, scan document uh, uh, in place of uh, So we have it's a flexible application where. You can allow the user to log into the system online in the process, or they can upload the document and then submit it. So it contains the entry. If you take a look at the timeline, it says when and what what has been done. So this is a useful time entry that needs to be uh, seen by the employee. Now I am forwarding this to the next level officer for uh, adding some comments. So based on the information given by the uh, document verifier, field inspector, and the NOC uh, approver, the final level executive engineer or uh, superintendent engineer can take a decision on whether to approve this or not. So he or she can see the entire details. They can see all the documents that are created. You can see the diagram. They can see the output. They can see the comments uh, by the field inspection report. They can see the field inspection report. They can see the timeline history. And then they can take an action action whether to approve or to begin. In this case, I'm going to approve this uh, file. Done. This is one process flow for uh, building permit application starting from EDCI scrutiny to building plan approval uh, output. Um, similarly, uh, so this is for permit application. Post this, the user can do the construction and then uh, get the permits. Uh, similarly, we have no objection certificate uh, process so where uh, uh, what happens is um, this is pre-construction. Uh, after the construction is completed, the citizen has to apply for a no objection certificate. In that case also, he or she needs to submit the diagram, actual construction diagram. There are chances that um, uh, there can be a deviation from the uh, building that was actually proposed and constructed. That's the reason diagram is requested. In that case also, the citizen has to approach the architect, uh, draw the diagram of the actual construction of the site. Then they have to upload. In that, in this case, what will the system do is that once you enter the plan permit number, system will extract the earlier diagram and the diagram which, which is uploaded right now for the uh, current construction and it will compare both the diagrams. And then it will throw an output saying that in these are all places, there is some deviation. And uh, it will validate with that of the deviation bylaw. There are bylaws for deviation also. If it is well within the deviation uh, cushioning that is given, system will say it is well within the deviation bylaw. It is approved. If it is not well within the deviation bylaw, then it will be penalized based on the different calculators that is that is running behind. And once that EDC is completed. Again, it goes for an application processing for occupant certificate also, where you need to upload some documents. Uh, the document scrutiny will be done. The field inspector will come to the site for uh, inspecting the actual construction, uh, which is completed. Then it goes to the final approval for issuing an ob no objection, uh, sorry, occupancy certificate. This is the process for what we have for uh, online building permission system. Uh, now I'm stopping here. Uh, we can, we are open for any doubts, comments, discussions. There are two comments, questions yeah. actually. So one question is regarding the NOC actually. So this is notification. 
Pradeep, is there any question that is unanswered? Yeah, there are two questions. One question from Krishna Swan. They are saying regarding notification on NOC application is sent to the ULP. Hmm. If the notification is configurable, NOC hmm. updation. This is one first question. Hmm. And a, when a specific uh, group of EM uh, emails actually or mobile numbers can be set up to receive this notification, is there when application every time changes? Is there question? See. Normally, we, in each uh, transactions, like when whenever the action is happening in our system, we are sending notification to citizen and the concerned architect about to SM and email alerts. Actually, that is configurable. Actually, and uh, yeah, based on the that notification alerts are there in our system. Actually, the another question is uh, why the team is revocating is used rather than simple term to be used like cancellation all those things. Why revocate is required is that question. No, that's a legal term that needs to be used by the client. It's 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 a it's a con or it's a localization key. For you, you can you can simplify it and then use it if if your client doesn't want that uh, name. It's just a localization key because there is a revocation order that needs to be generated. So we use the proper legal term uh, for the employee to understand. That's all. Nothing complex. For us, it might be a term which is which is something new, but for them, it is not. In client cases, yeah, few cases they clearly using these terms only. Revocation is required, so they need to generate the revocation notices. So in those cases, it's really helpful actually. Yeah. Go ahead, Shankar. That's all. Um, uh, that's all, Vibor. Uh, over to you. We have more questions. We can we can talk. We can discuss. Shankar, can you show the OC also? They are asking. Can we show the completion certificate? That flow also actually. No, that flow will take some time. So that will take another one hour. We. So. No, it's same. There is there is no change in functionality. The application is present at the same EDCR. You start from EDCR, you do a scrutiny. I don't have anything to explain more in OC uh, apart from just running through the application. That's the reason it is not handled in the current demo. Um, anyway, anyway, in the partner training, before people will have access for uh, using the application, right? They can try it out. If there is any, any doubt, we can help them out. Yeah, definitely. So there is a detailed documentation site that you can use. There are a lot of uh, training demos available out there. And any further queries, you can always, you know, uh, write, uh, you can always put up in a community and uh, and that can be responded. Uh, question regarding the recording of the session. Yes, we will have, uh, uh, we are recording the session and this will be available for all. Uh, uh, and you will be notified as soon as these are, these are made available. Um, then there are a couple of questions again for you, uh, Pradeep and uh, Shankar, about if you can show some analytics and reports, how that's been generated. And next question is about uh, what if post construction, building construction against bylaw? Yeah, uh, I was talking about the, com uh, I'll answer the second question first. We're talking about the uh, comparison report in the OCEDC as scrutiny. Uh, so if it is constructed against a bylaw, there is, see, if it is well within the tolerance limit or cushioning what the bylaw has given, there are penalizing uh, slams in which you will be penalized. Then you will say, we'll give a sign off, so your uh, sign occupant certificate based on the penalty clauses. If it is way above the cushioning effort that is given, it goes for a, uh, uh, what do you call, demolition of building with the court, court cases and all. It's not handled in the system, it's totally outside the system. Where, where they say we'll, we'll, we'll demolish the building, but obviously the person who's constructed the house will go for a court case that goes on a different track, which is not handled in the online building permission system. 
and regarding the reports uh, right now the report is part of uh, the next release what we are planning to uh, give maybe in the next release partners webinar you will we should be able to uh, show the reports that is generated for online building permission system then the next question comes in the chat about the technology used in the process of building approval what technology is used in the process of building pradeep can you take that yeah so we are using all the open source uh, tools actually in our entire digit configurations so we are using uh, spring boot applications and uh, all the applications uh, edcr part what we are scrutinizing here also we are using uh, java and uh, spring boot applications here we are using the, the open source like uh, uh, tools to extract the drawing actually and uh, we are also using uh, postgres database actually as a backend and uh, we and next one is we are using kafka for uh, kafka connectors these are the tools we are using for this application actually uh yeah right now this application is running in uh, gori code and in chandigarh um uh, so um there are challenges it is, see uh, the challenges like uh, um you training the architects and then getting them registered into the system also uh, um challenges in terms of finding the domain expert who can who, who can understand the flow from uh, um, bylaws and rules to uh, uh, what do you call uh, articulating the bylaws and rules into the into the diagram and then vice versa uh, that that will be some, something that initially you will have to spend time so that uh, you can set up the back end bylaw uh, into the system that is a major challenge uh, in this entire implementation apart from that architect uh, in terms of training see they already know how to draw the diagram they already know the layers and standards only thing is you have to tell them how to adapt it train them and then follow the standard that is prescribed in the digit uh, edcr standards that's the only thing other than that uh, uh, apart from the resistance from the ground you don't find any any more challenges or reminders and uh, i'm asking So adding to that Shankar's point, additionally, yeah. it depends on the state bylaws. If your bylaws are common across all the state, then it is easy actually. But if you feel each city has its own bylaws, that way also we can manage actually. So it is again configurable actually. So we are managing through Java code only all the feature wise these functionalities. The biggest, as Shankar mentioned, the challenge is to convert that bylaws into your logical format. That's very important. we really need the help of the domain expert to convert their existing bylaws and also uh, they just keep on changing it's not like the bylaws are not uh, consistently the same they are not follow right every year there will be amendments will come into picture when amendment happens how to manage those bylaws again that's also important why this amendment required is uh, when multiple uh, when i submitted uh, on that day only we will consider for the occupancy certificate to validate the bylaws so that's how the system should be designed actually so it is supporting the old applications plus uh, the new bylaws also we can configure in the system additional challenge is uh, how to take care of the multiple occupancies like when i combine the residential plus commercial how the system will validate the bylaws also important right so these kind of use cases we need to analyze when you are bifurcating your bylaws actually So it is not only like purely residential or commercial. When mixed use cases come into picture, how the system, which bylaws to be valid, that need to configure. We need to configure properly. Actually, that is one of the challenge we observed. Actually, Yes. So bylaws feeding to the software done by the developer or will be official. This is another question. See, we as of now it is we it's in the Java code actually. We added the conditions. Everything is in the Java level, and the but my 
layer names, color codings, what we are using, right? This is configurable actually. This we can we provided an option to modify this. So this in the tomorrow session we'll explain MDMS all these things where we clearly explain how to modify these layer names, color coding, all these kind of things. But city wise, actually, yeah, it is through Java only it is possible. The coding by the you will be any developer. So if no more further questions, I think uh, this is a good time that we could you know, end this session. Uh, again, a reminder to leave your feedback. Uh, once we end the session, you will be redirected to a feedback form, which will not take more than 25, 30 seconds for you to give feedback, but help us in future interactions and future, uh, you know, designing of future programs. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, tomorrow again, we'll uh, join back at 11 a.m. where we'll talk about the configuration and customization on digit. Uh, we'll go a little deeper into that. Plus we'll also, in the afternoon, we'll also look at some of the case studies on building new modules and building new domains uh, on, on digit. So uh, look forward to see you again tomorrow. Thank you everyone. Thank you Satish, uh, sorry. Thank you Shankar and Pradeep for, uh, for the session. Thank you, thank you Abu. Thank you for joining all. Thank you. Thanks, Pradeep. Thank you, everyone.